There was a workshop before I got involved where Simon experimented with telling the story in the normal complicite fashion, which is, you know, with a lot of actors on stage trying different ways of uh, creating those scenes and those different people, and it wasn't quite working. So this was the next step of workshops, was to find a new way of telling this story. And Simon was aware of binaural sound from some artist friends of his who'd used them in art shows. So he called me up and, and I'd used them previously in acoustics. And we started experimenting with different ways of working with binaural sound and headphones and what that could bring to how we told this story. My first introduction to the, to the encounter was a workshop video that was all sort of over headphones anyway. And you could see that already sound was going to be a huge part of it um, and a, a way to tell the story that was really interesting and different. So we decided to use binaural sound because this ability for the audience to wear headphones and hear what the head hears means that there can be this great sense of intimacy between Simon and the audience. Simon can walk up to the head on stage and whisper in its ear and it feels like he's whispering in our ear and that gives this immense sense of intimacy. And it also creates a sense of isolation for the audience. It's not the usual shared experience that an audience has. It's very much that Simon is telling us this story individually rather than he's telling us en masse. It's a bit like reading a bedtime story at night. You as an audience member can be transported somewhere else mm. using the binaural head. And that means that we can change location very quickly uh, in the encounter to uh, Simon's flat or into the middle of the rainforest and you, uh, rather than that being the shared experience it's, it's you individually feel like you're there in, in the place of Lauren McIntyre um, which is what, why this is really useful I think. Yeah. Creating a show that uses binaural sound means that you can't use normal off-the-shelf sound effects so if we were doing this show in a more normal fashion, if you like. <laughs> we could use recordings of the Amazon rainforest and planes and mosquitoes and all that sort of stuff. But because a lot of those aren't recorded binaurally, they don't really work when, you're, when you set it across another backdrop of binaural sound like we're using live in the show. So one of the main things was this, is that we had to go out and record a lot of the material from scratch binaurally. So we took our binaural microphone here to the Amazon rainforest. Uh, we hired light aircraft and flew him around. Uh, I went to a mosquito colony at the London School of Tropical Medicine and, and put, put it inside a, a, a huge tent of mosquitoes. Uh, and we took it to Epping Forest and recorded lots of people running around it and, and all that sort of stuff. Um, I think one of the instincts that we have in normal theatre shows is to create a lot of the sounds ourselves and one of the things we did in rehearsals was to set up speakers around the space to spatialise those normal sound effects that we mm. couldn't use. Um, but actually getting the real thing was so much more authentic and, and you can feel that in the show I think. One of the most unusual things we've had to do for this show is to put 600 pairs of headphones in an auditorium. And, and because wireless headphones aren't very high quality, we've had to use wired headphones. So we've had to design this infrastructure, this cabling system that can cable up 600 seats of a theatre for the audience to be able to hear their headphones. And, and for the audience, they just see a pair of headphones, but there's several kilometres of cable to, you know, squirreled away underneath the auditorium and going to all these custom bits of equipment that we've had to build mm. to, so that everybody can hear the sound binaurally. And I don't think anybody's ever done it before on this scale. You know, it's, it's, not, it's, it's relatively normal for like 20 or 30 pairs of headphones. Yeah, that's relatively straightforward, to, but to do 600 is, has just been immense. The fact that we are using headphones every day instead of conventional, conventional speakers means that you spend more time on headphones than you do without headphones. So I think that's a weird switch you have to have to make compared to normal shows.
and it just makes normal communication a lot trickier mm. actually because everybody's wearing headphones and got in-ear things someone's wearing in-ear things which means he can't hear anything unless it's going through our headphones we, you know we have to give everybody in the theatre the lighting designer the video designer the stage manager microphones mm. that connect into the headphone system just so that we can all talk to each other and hear each other without constantly going what was that what was that 